teaching tool time. Moodle is a virtual learning environment that supports many educational needs. It has many features to begin with and those can be extended with plugins because of the modular design of the system. With Moodle, a teacher can arrange his or her courses either completely online or take advantage of the blended learning methodologies. A Moodle environment consists of courses. Each course can have activity and resource blocks in it, like text pages, assignments, submission boxes, exams and discussion areas. With these blocks you can enable different kinds of two-way communications between the students and the teachers. The environment supports several levels of users with varying levels of access, connections to organizations, authentication systems, record keeping of assessments, scheduling of activities, conditional advancement of material based on students' achievements, multiple types of media, and plenty more. In this video, we go through the steps needed to create a new course and take a look at how the basic tools in Moodle work. In many cases, the ability to create new course spaces is reserved for the administrators. In other environments, teachers may be allowed to create their own courses. We focus now on how to fill the course space after it has been created and how to manage the settings for your course. When logging in, you can change the language used in the environment, though this does not necessarily change the language of the course content. The teacher has to create the content in all supported languages for this selection to work. After a successful login, you can see your own courses in your dashboard overview. You can also see your courses from the menu on the left, or browse all possible courses in the Site Home page. If you are not managing your own Moodle installation, chances are that you have a course already created for you. Let's go through the course configuration step by step. After you've opened your course environment, click the gear icon on the top right of your course header area and click Edit Settings. You can change the name of the course and the so-called short name, which will be shown in various places around the environment. If the course name and category have already been set in a way that seems reasonable to you, leave them be. The next setting though you might want to change to height until you have created at least the maturity of the course content. Course start and end dates should correspond to the proper dates and times for your course, but it's advisable to create the course to last a bit longer to accommodate the late submissions of coursework, delays in grading or retakes of exams. The course ID number is not required and if you wish you can write a short one or two sentence description of the course to be shown in the course list on the site home page. Settings under the course format heading are more of a teacher's preference. The course content can be organized in different ways such as by topics or by weeks. Depending on the course, content and, as mentioned, the teacher's preference, he can select, for example, a topic format or a weekly format. Other settings under this heading relate to the format selected and deal with issues such as what to show if a section is hidden or whether only one section or all sections, topics, weeks or such, are shown on the same page. You are encouraged to experiment with these settings and find the ones most suitable to your situation. Out of the next set of settings, it's suggested that the force language setting is left to do not force state. Other settings here are left to the preference of the teacher. File upload size is good to have set to the site upload limit if you expect students to submit documents containing images or other large files. Enabling completion tracking allows students to monitor their progression through the course and is thus suggested to be set to yes, though you need to take this into account while constructing your course. 
disable monitoring those elements that are irrelevant to the course completion, such as headers, instructions, or in some cases, discussion forums. You can organize students into groups, and each group can either see or not work done by other groups. Use cases for groups could be, for example, to separate course implementations between years, or different implementations to students attending only online portions of the course, and the students attending both online and classroom portions of the course. It should be noted that you can set a key for the course, without which a student cannot enter your course environment. But if you set a different key for each group, students, while they register to the course, are also entered into the corresponding group and therefore reducing the management overhead of the teacher. Click Save and Return to Course and you should see the most obvious changes you have made to course format, duration, etc. From here on, you can start adding content to your course. Each course starts with a default section called General. This can be thought of as a course handbook for students, and in fact renamed as such. This section can contain items like the course news forum, questions and answers forum, instructions on how to pass the course, coursework requirements or reading lists. General things that the student needs to refer back during the course. This example shows course format in the weekly layout with all sections on one page, hidden sections completely hidden from you. This helps the student to maintain the planned working rhythm from the start of the course and thus makes it a bit less likely for them to cram everything to the last possible moment. Though remember that this is just a guide, not a requirement for the student, so your results may vary. There are various types of contents that you can include to your course. We cover only the most basic ones here and even those in a rather quick look fashion. Content is added by going to the gear icon on the top right again, selecting Turn Editing On and then clicking the Add an Activity or Resource link in the appropriate section. The activities can be reordered later, so no need to worry too much on the order in which you add content to your course. The two most basic content types are labels and text pages. With labels you can insert whichever HTML text into the course sections. Usually this is best used as a heading to organize the content inside a section, but it can be used also as a divider line or just an informational piece of text in a section. Text page is a normal web page embedded in the Moodle environment. These text pages can be used as reading materials, text-based lectures, coursework instructions, or practically as a place for any piece of text longer than a sentence or two. You can think of the text pages as the Moodle equivalent of the place that you would normally use either PowerPoint slides, Word documents, or standard web pages, or a mixture of those. If you want to get the student to read something, this is the content type to use. Of course, you are not restricted to just text pages and labels. You can embed most file types with the file resource. If you use, for example, PowerPoint slides during a lecture, you can share those as a Moodle file resource, and students can open it in their own Office application just by clicking the link in the course area. You can even embed web pages as files and create page sub-hierarchies within the course sections. Files are uploaded by using the built-in file browser that supports drag-and-drop embedding. With the assignment resource, you can create activities that the students need to respond with answers, either online texts, submitted file, or several submitted files. This is the main form of student engagement and activation in Moodle, though there are many other content formats for this purpose as well. Discussion forums or news forums enable a traditional forum-based interaction between students and teachers. You can give some forum-related guidance in the description text and set the forum type while creating the forum item. It might be useful 
to force students to subscribe to some forums, like course information or notifications, so that they get an email reminder when someone has posted on the forum. There are common settings for many elements, such as visibility, access, tags, competencies and completion. You can set the visibility of an item or map the skills of the module to larger scale competencies, but the activity completion is a particularly interesting setting. If you choose for a particular resource to be monitored with activity completion, a small completion mark place appears next to the item in the course main view. Note that the default is that the completion monitoring is on. This should usually be turned off to items such as labels and other items that are not part of the activities student needs to complete in order to pass the course. You can then set some conditions when the monitored item is completed, and upon the condition being true, the student gets a check mark next to the activity. This way, the student can follow what needs yet to be done for the course before passing. The students can feel detached from the rest of the course if they are left alone and working only online. Communication between the students and teachers need to be kept up. This is a responsibility of both teachers and students alike. Blended learning helps with this, but is by no means the catch-all solution to the problem. Proper design of the course elements is needed to engage the students enough so that they don't drop out because of the apparent ease of taking the course wherever and whenever. Maintaining a virtual learning environment well requires usually more effort than teaching a course with more traditional methods. If the transition to the virtualization of courses is done solely to reduce the required resources for the course, things are going to be very difficult for all parties concerned. These are common problems to all virtual learning environment solutions. Problems specific to Moodle can include things like required resources for environment administration. Plugins needed for specific kind of resources might not exist since everything is open source and community made. You cannot always default to the best configuration options or easily select them. The vast amount of different resource types needs some insight and experience from the teacher, so that, for example, a proper type of an assignment is selected for the situation. Many of the problems posed by the Moodle environment are also its strengths. Open source, community support, configurability and multiple types of resources can, if used properly, give huge advantages to the course design and structure. Moodle is designed to support teaching with more than just being a material distribution platform. You can engage the students as well as organize your materials in a way that suits your teaching style. With plugins and some administrative privileges, you can expand the functionality of the platform with many different options and even write plugins yourself if you are familiar with programming. And, as with any virtual learning environment, the management of the course and materials is easy for a teacher.